Picture this, a dimly lit room, the hush of anticipation hanging in the air like a heavy curtain. It's the late 1970s, and you're about to embark on a cinematic journey that would stay etched in your memory forever. The year was 1979, and a film was about to be released that would captivate hearts and minds around the world, the Jesus film. Your first encounter with this iconic masterpiece might have been in the cozy confines of a neighborhood theater, or perhaps it was a late night screening on television. Wherever it was, you were undoubtedly drawn into a world that felt simultaneously ancient and timeless, a tale as old as humanity itself. As you sat there, watching the life of Jesus Christ unfold on the screen, you couldn't help but be moved by the sheer power of the storytelling. The film brought to life the profound teachings, the miracles, and the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus in a way that felt intensely personal. The characters, the landscapes, and the emotions all seemed to come alive, leaving an indelible mark on your soul. Maybe it was the stirring portrayal of Jesus by Brian Deacon, or the authentic backdrop of the Holy Land that made the experience so vivid. Perhaps it was the way the film delved into the timeless themes of faith, compassion, and redemption that resonated with you. Whatever it was, the Jesus film left an indelible imprint on your heart and mind. So, do you remember those moments? The tears shed, the questions pondered, the conversation sparked. The Jesus film wasn't just a movie, it was a profound journey of the spirit that has continued to impact lives for generations. Now, as we delve into some fascinating random facts about this cinematic masterpiece, let's revisit those cherished memories and discover even more about the film that touched us all. Get ready to be amazed, enlightened, and entertained as we uncover the hidden gems behind the Jesus film. In 2014, the Jesus film, a cinematic portrayal of the life of Jesus Christ released in 1979, underwent a remarkable transformation. The movie was completely remastered in high definition, accompanied by a new musical score and enhanced sound effects. This restoration project aimed to breathe new life into the classic film, making it more accessible and captivating for modern audiences. Notably, Brian Deacon, who portrayed Jesus in the original film, returned to provide the voiceover for his character, adding a layer of continuity and authenticity to the project. The crucifixion scene in the Jesus film is infamous for the challenges it posed to Brian Deacon, who portrayed Jesus. During filming, Deacon had to endure sitting on a nail for extended periods and maintain the excruciating position with outstretched arms. To achieve the realistic appearance of nails through the wrists, fake nails and red fingernail polish were used. In some shots, John Heyman and Paul Eshelman took turns on the cross to relieve Deacon highlighting the lengths the cast and crew went to for the sake of authenticity. One intriguing aspect of the film's production is the inclusion of a scene depicting Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, a narrative not found in the Gospel of Luke, which served as the primary source material for the movie. This scene, filmed by John Heyman, did not make it into the Jesus film or the New Media Bible Gospel of Luke. However, it did find its place in the Reader's Digest production titled Jesus, His Life and Times, released on VHS in the 1990s. Brian Deacon, reflecting on the filming of this scene, expressed his admiration for it, even as he pondered Heyman's decision to include it, given its absence in Luke's Gospel. The Jesus film, with its rich history of restoration and behind-the-scenes challenges, continues to be a cultural touchstone and a testament to the enduring power of its subject matter. Its ability to draw audiences into the timeless story of Jesus Christ remains a testament to its enduring impact on cinema and religious storytelling. In the 1979 film The Jesus Film, a meticulous effort was made to capture the essence of the biblical narrative, but some intriguing behind-the-scenes stories reveal the challenges faced by the crew. One such instance occurred during the filming of the scene in which Jesus healed the Gerasene demoniac by casting the demon into a herd of pigs. According to sources, including the book I Just Saw Jesus by Paul Eshelman, the crew encountered an unexpected challenge in bringing this moment to life. In St. Luke's Gospel, the account suggests that after the demon was cast out, the possessed pigs not only ran away but also threw themselves into a lake and drowned. To achieve this dramatic portrayal, the crew faced the daunting task of getting the pigs to act frenzied and self-destructive. Their ingenious solution involved the use of firecrackers to frighten the animals, prompting them to exhibit the desired chaotic behavior. 
This practical approach, while effective for the film's purpose, deviated slightly from the precise details in the gospel. Additionally, the film's portrayal of pivotal moments in the temple, such as Jesus overturning the money changers' tables and delivering parables, required meticulous planning. Surprisingly, all of these scenes were filmed in the same location, the fairgrounds in Jerusalem. The crew adeptly shifted the camera's positions for each shot to create distinct settings within this single venue, showcasing their resourcefulness in recreating historical events. Another captivating anecdote surrounds the scene in which Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, cuts off the ear of the high priest's servant. According to Paul Eshelman's account, this seemingly straightforward moment proved to be a challenging endeavor. The crew had to film the scene a staggering 33 times before achieving the desired result. The intricacy of this scene lay in a special effect involving a string attached to the actor playing the high priest's servant. When Nico Nido, portraying Peter, cut the string, a fake ear and red nail polish were intended to be released, simulating the severed ear. It took numerous attempts before they achieved the desired visual effect, underscoring the dedication and persistence of the filmmakers. In their pursuit of authenticity, the creators of the Jesus film encountered both creative and technical challenges, resulting in fascinating stories behind the making of this iconic movie. In 1979, the Jesus film made cinematic history with its portrayal of the life of Jesus Christ. While the film is renowned for its faithful adaptation of the Gospel of Luke, there are intriguing details that often go unnoticed. One remarkable tidbit involves two actors, Moscow Alkali and Yitzhak Neiman, who played minor roles in the TV movie Mary and Joseph, a story of faith, released around the same time. In a peculiar twist, not only did they appear as extras in the crowd in Mary and Joseph, but their voices were dubbed over in that film as well. It's a curious crossover in the world of biblical cinema, leaving cinephiles to wonder about the casting decisions behind this unorthodox choice. Furthermore, an early promotional poster for the Jesus film featured a powerful image of Jesus healing a lame man, a scene that never actually made it into the final cut of the film. However, this particular moment is preserved in the New Media Bible version of the story. This intriguing discrepancy between promotional material and the film itself adds a layer of mystery to the production process. Additionally, the Jesus film undertook a unique endeavor by simultaneously filming a children's version alongside the main production. This thoughtful decision allowed younger audiences to engage with the story of Jesus in a way tailored to their understanding and sensitivity. The Jesus film of 1979 remains a pivotal cinematic work, both for its dedication to biblical accuracy and the fascinating behind-the-scenes stories that surround its making. These lesser-known facts provide a deeper appreciation for a film that has left an indelible mark on religious cinema. In the realm of biblical cinema, the 1979 production of the Jesus film holds a hallowed place. However, hidden behind the scenes are intriguing tales that shed light on the challenges and triumphs of its cast. Notably, the character of John the Baptist, portrayed by Lee Cohen, harbored a sense of disappointment over a scene's omission. On an Israeli talk show, Cohen revealed his frustration that a pivotal moment featuring Herod's soldiers coming to arrest his character was left on the cutting room floor. Interestingly, this scene found a second life in the New Media Bible, offering audiences an alternative glimpse into Cohen's portrayal of the iconic biblical figure. A transcontinental journey of another actor adds an extra layer of intrigue to the film's narrative. Richard Peterson, who played Herod Antipas, was an American-born actor with Jewish roots. His decision to relocate to Israel, where he not only taught drama but also produced and occasionally acted in English-language educational programs like Debbie in Hospital and Gabby in Debbie, showcases the film's impact not just as a cinematic venture, but as a catalyst for personal and professional transformation. The interpersonal dynamics among the cast members also bear mentioning. According to Paul Eshelman's book I Just Saw Jesus, Yitzhak Neiman, who portrayed James, was reportedly a challenging colleague to work with, exhibiting an air of uncooperativeness. Additionally, Eshelman claimed in his book that Nico Nidai, who played Peter, underwent a profound religious transformation. However, Nidai himself vehemently denied this assertion and expressed his disdain for the film, labeling it as the worst he had ever been part of. 
He particularly despised the fact that his voice in the American release was dubbed over, a point that continues to fuel discussions among fans of the film. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes offer a captivating glimpse into the making of the Jesus film, revealing the complex interplay of artistic vision, personal journeys, and the enduring legacy of this iconic cinematic portrayal of the life of Jesus. Such narratives serve as a testament to the enduring impact of the film on those who contributed to its creation and continue to engage with its message today. As we draw the curtains on our cinematic journey through the enigmatic world of the Jesus film, I invite you to pause and reflect. This timeless masterpiece, released in the year of 1979, has left an indelible mark on the tapestry of cinema history. It's not merely a movie, it's an experience, a voyage into the depths of faith and humanity. Perhaps, like many, you were introduced to the Jesus film at a pivotal moment in your life. It might have ignited profound questions about spirituality, or perhaps it served as a comforting beacon of hope during a challenging time. Maybe you were enthralled by the exceptional storytelling or mesmerized by the portrayal of a pivotal moment in history. What memories or thoughts has the cinematic gem unearthed in your heart? Were there scenes that resonated with you on a profound level? Did it inspire you to explore your own beliefs or simply left you in awe of its cinematic prowess? We encourage you to share your cherished memories and thoughts about the Jesus film with us and your fellow cinephiles. Your unique perspective adds depth to the rich tapestry of experiences associated with this cinematic masterpiece. Thank you for joining us on this reflective journey through the Jesus film. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated. We look forward to hearing your stories and insights, and we hope this cinematic treasure continues to inspire and provoke thought for generations to come. Warm regards.